Okay, so I'm going to read you an introduction because we're going to get into um, concentration of pollutants. So if you're not into Canvas yet, go ahead and log in and get to that first assignment. But pay attention to this because this is going to have some of the answers that you're going to want for the assignment. Okay, so imagine you are sipping some orange juice while standing beside the LHS swimming pool. A friend walks up behind you and gives you a friendly nudge. A few drops of orange juice splash into the pool. Thanks to the diffusion and the pool pumps, the juice quickly spreads through the water. Could anyone tell that a few drops have been added to 200,000 gallons of water? No, okay. Certainly there is no obvious change in color, odor, or taste of the pool water. However, the pool is now one part per billion orange juice which is an amount that scientists can detect using accurate and expensive instruments. So we can detect tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, one part per billion orange juice. We can find that with really expensive instruments, not, not a microscope, not like a simple test. It's like really expensive instruments, okay? Does one part per billion orange juice matter in a swimming pool? No, but what if the spill was a toxic pesticide? Would it still be safe to swim in the pool? Or what if the drops have been one of the chemicals called dioxins, which are some of the most toxic substances known to man? Dioxins can be found as contaminants in some pesticides. The CDC considers one part per billion of dioxin in soil to be a concerning level. The FDA suggests that you do not eat fish that have greater than 50 parts per trillion of dioxin, which is 0 0.05 parts per billion. Your drops of orange juice would need to be spilled into a pool the size of 20 Olympic sized swimming pools to dilute it to 50 parts per trillion. Today, humans make some extremely poisonous chemicals. It is important to be able to detect very tiny amounts of these chemicals to make sure that they aren't present in unsafe amounts in the air we breathe or the water that we drink, okay? So the whole purpose of this today is to show you that our eyes really suck. And so do our taste buds and our noses as far as trying to detect a chemical, okay? We can't really detect things with those, but we can with really expensive instruments. Let me find a solid white piece of paper here, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I have a bunch of test tubes. Each of these test tubes has nine milliliters of water in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dye and I'm going to dilute it to a part in 10 and then one part in 100 and then one part in 1000. So go ahead and click begin on your assignment. Okay, so how dilute can we see, okay? And the first question, do you guys see a picture of test tubes? The left one says one part in 10? Yeah. Okay, so from left to right on there, it's going from most concentrated, which is one part in 10, where I take this and I just add one milliliter of this to nine milliliters of water. That's one part in 10, okay? And then all the way to one part per billion, PVB. Yeah, okay? So it's most concentrated to least concentrated. I want you to click on the test tube where you think you will no longer be able to see the color. Like this is like a dark brown. I'm gonna dilute it, dilute it, dilute it. Every time it's gonna get 10 times more dilute. Click on the test tube where you think the color will disappear. And then click next. So that, that picture goes from one part in 10, which is the most concentrated, to one part per billion, which is least. Where do you think you're no longer going to be able to see the color? Because it'll be too dilute. Just click. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Just, just guess. Anybody want to share their guess? I said the one before. Like, the, last one. The, the second to last one? Any other guesses? Okay. It's okay. You don't have to share. Okay. So here's what you're, we're going to start. Everybody made a guess? Okay, the next picture you're going to click on where it actually disappears. Okay, so here's what here's the first one. I'm going to take one milliliter of this dye and I'm going to squirt it into nine milliliters of water. So one part out of the 10 milliliters is dye. Okay. 
Can you still see the color? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to rinse out this iPad real quick. Okay, so now I'm going to take one drop of this, or one drop, one milliliter of this test tube. Suck it up there. And then I'm going to put that into nine milliliters of water. So what's 10 times 10? 100. So now this one's going to be one part in 100. Okay. Can you still see the color? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Rinse this one out. Okay, I'm going to take one milliliter of this. Squirt it in here. So we have uh, that was one part in a hundred, and then diluting it by ten. What's ten times a hundred? A thousand. Okay. So this is. Do you still see color in there? Let me hold up the water one next to it so you can see them next to each other. Can you tell there's color in the? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we can still see it there. I'm going to just show the video real quick so that they can see it too. So still see a little color there, hopefully. Okay. And then I'm going to take one milliliter here. This is the part in a thousand, right? So now I'm going to go to one part in 10,000, which is the same thing as a hundred parts per million. Can you guys see a difference? No. Anybody? No? I can't, but sometimes people have better eyes than me. Anybody see a difference? No. Okay. So that's where it disappeared at the 100 parts per million. So again, I'll show the video with a little white background here. They look the same. Okay. Okay. So click on where it disappeared and then answer the rest of the questions in there. And then that's it for this part of the lab. And then we're going to move on to the next part.